Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Jam Sam's Judgment, my weekly review podcast, uh, where I review anything. Uh, this is the the gist of what's uh, about to go down. Uh, anyone here live can uh, contribute their thoughts and feelings and questions and everything like that, uh, and I will do my best to keep the conversation going. Um, make it as interactive as possible. Uh, so yeah, it's a review podcast, and today we are reviewing Stranger Things, focusing on season three, the one that just came out. Um, glossing over season one and two, uh, just to get, you know, the gist of the story and, uh, what's going on and... I also want to compare the seasons as well. Uh, I do I do that quite a lot when I get onto the actual review. So just so everyone knows what's uh, what's going on, I'm just gonna quickly run through season one, two, and then give a summary of three. Then I'll go through what I liked about season three, and then I'll go about uh, and then I'll talk about what I didn't like. And then I'll give my uh, my judgment. I've also got two separate judgments. I've got one judgment for as a whole, like all three seasons, like as a as a thing, as a se- is it? yeah, as a series. And then I've got one for the latest season uh, because they do have different scores, and uh, I will explain why. Yes, as a stranger thing, precisely, precisely for it. Okay, so season one, season one. Basically, there's a little town in America land, somewhere in America land, called Hawkins. Now, in Hawkins, there's a big old, maybe government lab. I don't know who runs it. Some, some big lab, some sci-fi lab where people are experimenting and basically they're experimenting on trying to i think it was like mind control or something basically things happened uh and two little girls uh, ended up with uh, superpowers i i guess or just powers they're not like superpowers but they are their powers they they are powered uh one has, uh, well, you only know what one has in the first season, so I'll save that, the other one, for season two. Um, telekinesis powers, so moving things with your mind. Um, if you, is there anything else? No, I think that's pretty much all she can do. Uh, and this kid is codenamed Eleven, which is the only character that Fritz remembers. <laughs> Uh, So, Eleven, which is how she's pretty much known throughout all of the seasons. Her real name's Jane, uh, which I didn't remember before I looked it up. Uh, So, Eleven, or or L for short, um, sort of harnesses her powers a bit more in the lab and escapes uh, and runs off into the the woods. Um, Meanwhile... There's a group of kids, a group of nerdy kids. Uh, you first meet them playing a D&D campaign. Um, I think there's four of them. Yep, there's four of them. I think. Is there four of them? There's, there's no teeth, kid. <laughs> there's... What's his name? Okay, I'll try, I'll try and remember their names. There's Dustin. That's no teeth, kid. There's... Mike, <laughs> there's Will, which is, uh, oh, fucking hell, uh, Lucas is the other one, Lucas is the other one that I forgot, okay, so there are four, see, I really, I know my stuff, I know my stuff, so basically, they, they're all playing D&D, afterwards, uh, Will goes missing, uh, he gets kidnapped by some sort of monster, some sort of monster, um, turns out they they call it the Demogorgon because of, it's named after a D and D monster or something. Um, 
So the kids then go looking for Will, uh, but they find Eleven instead. Yeah, he gets kidnapped by a monster energy drink. Uh, who is being controlled by a guy named Kyle in a backwards snapback. Um, but yeah, the kids, while looking for their missing friend, find Eleven instead, and they sort of uh, they sort of team up because Eleven. Thing is, um, with Eleven, because she's spent her whole life in the lab, she can't really talk or communicate very well. She's pretty basic. Or at least in season one, she's very basic with the communications and stuff, so it's hard to know what's going on. Uh, but they team up, and basically, they all team up to uh, hunt, not hunt the monster, but find find Will, um, and it turns out Will got taken to this place called the Upside Down, which is basically another dimension, which is basically the same as Earth, but spooky. <laughs> It's spooky Earth with lots of monsters and everything shit. Um, so yeah, that's the upside down. So that's where the monster took him. Uh, Eleven, yes, yeah, it's like a it's like a mirror dimension. Uh, Everything is spooky and dusty and gross and gooey. <laughs> I guess gooey. It's very good. Everything's very gooey in the upside down. Also, hello, Gabby. Uh, don't spoil my my rating. Maybe oh, oh god damn. God damn. <laughs> you knew I was going to give it a 2 out of 10 for being too strange. No, nah, I gave it higher than that. Spoiler, I gave it higher than 2. It's very gooey. It's very gooey. Um See, I'm trying to remember this. Like I said, I've only written down like three lines to try and summarize this season 1 and I should have written more maybe. So, monster spooks the kids, uh, Eleven uses her powers, kills the monster, but uh, sacrifices herself. Um, and then, pretty much the series ends with uh, the day being saved, Will's back, uh, but a bit weird, I think he... At the end, I think he vomits up some sort of goo slug. I think that's, <laughs> that was like the teaser for season two, him vomiting up some sort of gooey slug thing. Um, so season two, right? I've, I've, I think I'm a bit more to grips with uh, season two. It's more recent. So, turns out Eleven didn't die. Obviously, the main character didn't die. Surprise, surprise. Uh, she escaped the upside down, and uh, is she escaped into the woods and. She was taken in by Hopper. Okay, so Hopper, who I didn't introduce, Hopper is the the chief of police, the sheriff in the town. Um, who is probably one of the best characters. Uh, so she's take he's taken in by she is taken in by Hopper. Uh, secretly to because I think the um the government people are still looking for her. Um, from the lab. I think yeah, they're still going at this point. Um, and then there's like a year jump, year time gap jump, um, and basically the the gang, the gang of kids, gets a replacement for L uh, called Max. She comes in from California, um, and is also nerdy like them, so they take her in. Uh, and along with Max comes her dickhead brother Billy. Uh, I don't really remember much from, of Billy from season two, apart from that he was a dickhead um, and like abusive and things and very angry, uh, and also very attracted to milfs. I think he wants to bang Will's mum. I think. <laughs> so, uh, so that's um, that's Billy. That's Billy's deal. Um, so yeah, she, Max and Billy are on the scene, new characters, uh, but things in the town are getting a bit fucky, okay? It seems that maybe the, uh, the upside down problems haven't quite been solved, the crops are dying, there's weird, uh, deaths of things and stuff, and I think they find some goo. <laughs> I think everything's going gooey, uh, which is, as we know, 
a staple of the Upside Down. Everything's going gooey, everything's going fucky. Um, so, Hopper is investigating that as Chief of Police. Um, and then, so these are the other group. There's basically three groups of people there's the adults, uh, which is like, I'm gonna probably call like Hopper's group, there's the kids. Uh, who go with like eleven and stuff, and then there's the teenagers, which is um, Will's sister. No, Will. No, Will's brother. Um, Mike. Mike's sister. Guy called Steve. Uh, with good hair. And I think that's it. So there's like three teenagers, uh, and they're investigating stuff and things <laughs> this is a very bad review uh summary okay they're investigating all these weird occurrences uh and they managed to get evidence i think they get some tapes and release them to the public um yes there are tunnels uh which are which are part of the fuckiness there are gooey tunnels that start appearing all uh, like around the uh, city i think that's why like crops are dying because goo is spreading from the tunnels uh, yes, tunnels are important for it. I, I, yeah, I think I'll get back to that. Uh, so the teenagers get evidence and they, um, they leak it, uh, not online because this is all set in the 80s, but they somehow get it all out there and they get the lab shut down, uh, the lab which was doing all the experiments. So then uh, old no tooth dude, Dustin, finds oh does he find maybe it's that thing that maybe it's the slug it might be the slug i think he finds the slug and it, he keeps it as a pet for some reason <laughs> um and keeps it in like a little like a uh, terrarium or like an aquarium or something um and it gradually grows up into this sort of dog-like version of the monster from the first one. Um, well, he didn't realise at first. He should have realised as soon as he saw the weird slug thing. <laughs> um, but he starts to gradually realise, oh shit, this is the same as the monster from the first one. Uh, so he's raising a monster <laughs> in secret. Um, meanwhile, Will, who was the one that got kidnapped in the first one, gets possessed by a big upside down monster. Uh, it's like basically like a smoke monster. It looks like you never really see him. Um, and that's he's called the Mind Flayer. Well, that's the name they give him. Um, so Will is possessed by this uh, Mind Flayer. And basically the Mind Flayer wants to take over the normal world as well as the upside down. So he's, he uses Will to sort of uh, map out and get these tunnels. Tunnels. Fritz tunnels. Which you remember, clearly, I'm sure. Um, so you get these tunnels. Tunnels, yes, tendrils. Um, and basically help, starts to help. And, and he also uses them to like spy on them, because... And like stay like one step ahead of the of the humans in a way. Um, basically, in Hawkins, there's a big shit show with lots of monsters, lots of these uh, demogorgon dogs or demo dogs uh, attack them. Uh, it's it's all it's a massive shit show, lots of monsters. Meanwhile, you may ask, well, why doesn't Eleven just uh, like use her powers to sort all of this? Eleven is not there. Because Eleven went off to have her emo phase, okay? Now that's not a joke. She literally goes off. Uh, first she finds her mother, uh, who turns out to be insane from lab experiments. Uh, she finds out the truth of what happened in the lab and everything like that. Then she finds the other girl that was experimented on and has powers, um, who's in some sort of gang. Um, and the other girl's powers are... I if I can remember rightly, she can make you see things. Like, it's kind of like 
Scarecrow from ba from Batman with his like fear gas. Uh, she can make you see like scary things. Yeah, she can she can change what people see basically. Uh, so that's her power. Um, and then they they hunt down as a gang. They hunt down a few of the people from the lab. Um, but Eleven decides, oh, no, nah, uh, this is too much for me. I don't like that. Heads back to Hawkins. Uh, and as she arrives, obviously she arrives to a huge shit show of monsters and all her friends are going, oh my Jesus fuck, where have you been? Please fix this. Uh, and she does. She just uses her powers, uh, closes the massive rift that's forming like in the lab basement to the upside down where all the tunnels were leading. Uh, they kill all the dogs and everything is fine they close it every all the monsters are dead and then hopper adopts 11 um and all freaking freaking happy families at the end and that's season two i'm sure i didn't miss a thing there's also a huge war scene which i thought was pretty smart and the police is dumb and shoots the wall does he <laughs> Yeah, so the, there's a huge, like, crack in the wall that's, like, ripping open, and it's, like, a dimensional rift or something, and that's what Eleven closes. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what happens in the first two seasons. Now, season three, which I should know more about because I've just watched it. <sighs> now, I know... <sighs> Wait, hang on. Uh, where the girls run from the police. Uh, you, I mean, Fritz, I, uh, I just, re <laughs> clearly, <laughs> you just listened to my, me try my best. That was me trying my best to explain the first two seasons. I do not remember that. I do not remember specific things like that. I am sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, the the vision girl. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the girl with the vision changes. I do remember that bit, but I don't... I really don't remember much about that um, whole thing. And who cares? Because, spoiler alert for season three, they... they ne then all of the other people with powers, not even mentioned. Not even mentioned. Not once do they go, oh, by the way... They die? Do they? I don't remember that, and I didn't read that in the, uh... In the summary I just read. I don't think they die. I don't think they die. I think Eleven just leaves them because she doesn't agree with what they were doing to the, um... The people from the lab. Yeah, I don't think they died. But either way, never mentioned or heard of again, so it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Um, so, season three. Season three is like a very basic version of season two. Um, it's literally, the story is the same. The gateway is open again the big monster the same big monster wants to come in it's the, that is that's the story again um so basically this time the gateway is being opened uh by russians <laughs> for some reason uh and this is one of the biggest like okay i guess i'm just gonna have to accept that that happened um the russians it's just the Russians. I. It's not like it's a group or anything. It's literally just the Russians. Um. Built. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this season. For it's America good, Russia bad. <laughs> there's a lot of that. Um. So they have secretly, somehow, secretly built a super underground facility under the town of Hawkins without anybody knowing which connects to the new mall that's been built, okay? So, and they're opening the 
trying to open the portal there. Um, so the Mind Flare is still about. And how though? Yeah, exactly. How? <laughs> There's a whole thing where apparently the mayor was helping cover it up. But even so, that everyone would have known. <laughs> because that is not something you can just do <laughs> with in complete secret. And how are you hiding all the Russians? <laughs> They're just about. It's just, oh, it makes no sense. Uh, anyway, so when, as they're trying to open the portal, uh, oh, more kooky stuff is happening in the town of Hawkins. Uh, and basically, the Mind Flayer possesses a bunch of people, just like it did with Will. Uh, possesses a bunch of people and animals and uses them to do its bidding. Uh, he, or oh, it, explodes most of them into goo. Goo. I told you goo was important. So he explodes most of them into goo and then takes all the goo, scoops the goo, and smushes the goo and makes himself a goo monster, okay? So the Mind Flayer is now a goo monster in the real world, so he, he's managed to get through, okay? As a goo monster. Um, but one of the people he possesses, which he doesn't turn to goo, is Billy. You remember that milf loving Billy? Uh, you remember him? He gets possessed, but he doesn't get turned to goo. Basically, he's kind of a, a he's basically the will of this season. He gets him to do his bidding. Um, uh, it's like he's obviously he's a bad guy anyway. That's one. Of the, I'll get onto it, but I'll, I'll just mention that I think it, he would have just made a better bad guy had he not been possessed. Because when he's possessed, he hardly has any lines. He doesn't really do anything, he sort of just stands there and s tries to stop them, but there's no reason why he wouldn't have been turned to goo, if you know what I mean. There's nothing he provides to the Mind Flayer by being Billy, so I don't know. So this, uh, this whole season is just, it's worse. Spoiler, it's worse than the other two. Um, so yeah, the gang... Well, like everyone is split up, and I've I've separated it into like the groups because every group is doing a different thing. Rather than in the other seasons, there were a lot of communication between the adults and the children, but this season everyone's doing their own thing. Not much communication between the two. Then they all come together at the end. Okay, so there's the Scoops Ahoy crew. Uh, Scoops Ahoy is basically where Steve works with new character Robin. Uh, so he's one of the teenagers, and the Scoops Ahoy crew is Steve, Robin, and Dustin, Toothless. Um, and um, Lucas's little sister for a bit, for some reason. Um, so the Scoops Ahoy crew, uh, basically, they intercept a Russian transmission, uh, translate it, crack the code, and infiltrate this big secret Russian lab. So that's what the Scoops Ahoy crew do. Now that, and then there's the Nancy crew. So the Nancy crew is basically uh, Mike's sister Nancy and Will's brother Jonathan. <laughs> they're very forgettable. Um, and basically they, they're finding evidence of these like weird possessions and everything. So they're gathering evidence of these possessions and trying to figure out things on their own. Okay, uh, then there's the Eleven crew, which is Eleven and the rest of the kids. Uh, they use Eleven's powers to track Billy and like find out what he's doing. That's how they find out about the Mind Flare and stuff. But they, they don't know about all the Russian stuff. They don't know like the Russians are behind it and protecting the portal and stuff. Uh, then there's the Hopper crew, which is Police Chief Hopper. Um, his weird friend, who I don't know the name of, a kidnapped Russian from the from the lab called Alexi, and Will's mum, Joyce. Uh, so that's the Hopper crew, and basically they're investigating the Russians, and they are trying to get information from from this kid from Alexi, uh, who who eventually 
gets on side and uh, helps them and tells them all about the base and how to d destroy the machine causing the portal. Uh, so that's what Hopper's doing. Uh, so it all like jumps between the different stories all season. And then the final episode or the final few episodes, they all reconvene at the, at the new mall, uh, which is the entrance to the secret lab as well. Uh, they share all their information, everyone knows everything about the Russians and the portal and the big monster made of goo. Uh, then the big monster comes, tries to kill them all. They uh, defeat the big monster. Uh, while Hopper and Joyce go down, infiltrate the Russian base and try and close or destroy the machine that's opening the gate. Uh, Hopper R.I.P. sacrifices himself uh, in order to destroy the machine. Uh, uh, yeah, Hopper Hopper dies. Very, very sad. Very sad. Like I said, he was one of the best characters. So, well, I mean, he dies. Okay. I mean, there's a little teaser at the end, which I wish they actually didn't have because it's way better without it. Um. So yeah, Hopper Hopper dies. Uh, which is sad again because he was um, acting as Eleven's dad. Uh, so now Eleven is all alone again. Uh, but she then moves away with Will and his family at the end as well. So she's found a new family, I guess. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to be part of their family because they're boring as fuck. They're the most, the ho that whole family is the full of the most boring characters in the whole thing. Honestly. I'll get on to it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's season three. Like I said, it's basically just the same plot as season two. Portal opens. Same monster tries to get in. They close portal. That's it. <laughs> like it's the same. It was. It's nothing new. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's fine. Okay. So, like I said, two sections, what I liked and what I didn't like. Uh, I may I may seem a bit down on this whole thing at the moment, but there are good things and obviously bad things. Uh, one thing that's really good about not just this season and just all of them in general is there's a lot of good character stuff. The relationships between the characters are good, they're well thought out, they're, they're believable. And they're just mostly well acted as well. Um, usually it's a bit dodgy with um, child actors, obviously, but they seem to have found some good ones. Uh, personally, I think Lucas isn't as good as the other ones, but he doesn't really do much, so it doesn't really matter. Um... I think that's that's something that season three suffered with. A lot of the characters just have nothing to do, and like it would have been exactly the same if they were just not there, um, which is a bit shit. Because <laughs> like you got to give the if you're gonna put a character in there, you got to give them something to do. Uh, otherwise, it's just boring. Um. But yeah, I thought, but then I thought, well, I do like the characters, but is that just because I watched the first two se seasons, kind of seen these kids like grow up? They've gotten like a lot older as they, as they went along. Um, so maybe I've just, you know, gotten, not gotten used to them, but, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Like you've, you've seen, it's like the, it's like what happened with Harry Potter when that came out. Like the Harry Potter people... They weren't, they weren't the best, like, people, or, like, or actors, especially in the first, like, three films when they're younger, but you, then you see, you, like, grow up with them and, like, see all their stories, and then you, like, grow attached, and then you can't imagine them as anyone else, because you've, like, y you know, it's the same sort of thing. Um, hello, Pete. Welcome. Um... But yeah, in general, the character stuff, good. Everyone's relationships, pretty pretty good, solid, solid stuff. Um, and obviously, it 
this season relies a lot more on the character things because, like I said, the story, <laughs> the big story, it, it's not great. It's not great. Um... Uh, so like like I said, Hopper is really good. Uh, the, the actor is just really good. Uh, what's, his, what's he called? Uh, David Harbour uh, is really good. Um, it, there's some good stuff about him trying to be a good dad to Eleven, which I really liked. Uh, the kidnapped Russian Alexei, I also liked how his transition from uh, firm firm Russian like. I guess patriot not wanting to help the Americans to slowly realizing that what the Russians are doing is insane and he needs to like help everyone. Uh, he, and he's just he had this really cute moment where he's like he experienced um, Fourth of July at an American fun fair for the first time and he was so damn happy. He was so damn happy. He was watching like before he was watching Woody Woodpecker on the on the TV. And then he had this big moment at the fair when he like popped the right balloons and he won a giant woody woodpecker and he was so damn happy and literally in the next three seconds he gets shot by by a big russian man and alexi dies and like i honestly think alexi's death almost affected me as much as when hopper died because <laughs> i was like no Alexi, you deserved, you deserved better. You would have been so happy. You just, oh, he just got his Woody Woodpecker. Oh, R.I.P. Big sad indeed. Uh, um. So yeah, that like, there's just a lot of stuff like that. I like the Scoops Ahoy crew as well. Um. Yeah. So Scoops Ahoy crew, Hopper crew. Kid crew, like sort of down here, and fucking like Nancy crew, like way at the bottom. They did not need to be in it either. Um, they did not do a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, like next thing I've got is some good deaths. Hopper, Alexi. Things. Think about the deaths in this in all of the seasons. All of the deaths are, are poignant. And you like feel them. What is that in the background? What are you like? Are you are you serious, Pete? Because uh, like, obviously it's a freaking podcast. You can't just say that the audio is like busted halfway through. Are you- what are you talking about? I can't hear anything. Cool. Well, thank- thanks for that, Pete. <sighs> Fuck's sake. It's the music, okay. Right. Yeah, they're called drums, Pete. They're called drums. You ever heard of them? <laughs> Christ Almighty, man. Anyway, <sighs> fuck's sake. F fully derailed now. Um, how was I? What I liked. Okay. Uh, pretty amusing as a show. Uh, some good comedy moments. Not like laugh out loud, funniest thing you'll ever see or watch uh, humor, but like it's entertaining, it's humorous, lighthearted, fun. Uh, makes it a fun watch overall, as well as the more serious bits. Um, so yeah, that's nice. Uh, like a lot of that comes from the good character interactions and uh, good character development on the most part. Um, so yeah, it's just like, you know, the sort of humour you'd get with a group of friends and you sort of see them bonding and stuff. It's fun. It's fun. Okay. Uh, the special effects, pretty good. 
pretty damn good for a. Uh, I know it's technically not a TV show; it's a Netflix show, but t TV show level special effects usually aren't that good. More in recent years they are, but uh, definitely like when it used to literally be TV, uh, not great. But as far as big goopy sludge monsters go, it's solid. Like I'd say, I'd say movie quality, movie quality special effects on that. Uh, which is which is good. It, it makes you more immersed if it's not like a weird, really dodgy three polygon CGI monster that's uh, smashing about. Um, so yeah, effects, nice effects are are good. Do they have a big budget? Probably. This is like one of Netflix's biggest shows. I can't imagine they do not have much money to go on, uh, and. Yeah, they must make fuck. Oh, they must make a fuck ton of money from Stranger Things. <laughs> My God, I would assume they have a very big budget. Um, as far as I'm aware, obviously I was uh, not alive in the '80s, but as far as I can tell, they do the '80s very well. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you know. 80s themed things are very popular at the moment with like films like it and stuff and like 80s culture is still very popular with the very popular music all the films like like Ghostbusters like Ghostbusters and stuff like that everyone seems to just love the 80s so it's like it does the 80s well and I'm sure a lot of people that watch this show surely just watch it for the 80s nostalgia like oh that is what it was like in the 80s god damn that is what it was like in the 80s second part of it is coming out soon second part of what if you're talking about another season of stranger things no it isn't <laughs> i'm pretty sure oh it as it oh okay yeah yeah, why not? yeah, we know, we know, Pete. <laughs> yes, there is a that yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. Um. Oh, fuck's sake! I'm I, every time I lose my fucking place. Yeah, this is why I say. Oh fuck! I'm saying. Never mind. Uh, um, the ending. I liked the ending, in some ways. Um, so the it ended, like I said, with them stopping everything. Everything's happy days apart from Hopper. It would make a fine ending, a bit like the end of season two. It would just make a, a fine f good ending if they didn't have the after credits thing which teased more like it would have been fine they should have maybe just left it but obviously this like i said this is one of their most popular shows it makes a lot of money so obviously they're going to make a season four uh basically the after trailer things um Uh, after trailer is it cuts to Russia uh, where the Russians initially started their testing um, and they have uh, one of the monsters from the first season um, in in a cage and they feed a guy to it uh, so that's that's obviously gonna be season four is gonna be based around oh the monsters are back which is you know the, the exact same plot as all the other ones. Uh, but this is what I didn't like. Um, you know I said Hopper died. <laughs> well, uh, they when we're, when we're in Russia, we see the people, and they mention that they have an American held captive, and they're like, oh no, don't feed the American to the monster, basically. Now, everyone obviously believes this is going to be Hopper, and it's in t like fully possible, even likely, because the way Hopper died, he was next 
So, say the machine was here, he was next to the machine, and then in between him and the machine... No, he, so, the machine was here. He was between the, the machine and the portal, okay? So there was no way to escape while it exploded. So, if he was, if he's alive, because you don't see him die, it would be very easy to justify. All they'd need to do is say, he went into the upside down because he was right next to the portal. And I believe that's probably what they're going to do. They're probably going to go, oh, he escaped to the upside down. And that's that's what they're hinting at, basically. He went into the upside down and then came out in the Russian's portal, basically. Um, so that's the, the theory, or my theory, at least. Um, which I wish they won't do. It's probable that they will do that. I wish they'd just leave him dead because it was a good ending. If they bring him back to life, it will just make the whole thing worthless. Because you like what as soon as you start bringing characters back from the dead, it's like, oh, what is the so uh, yeah, it just makes it the whole thing worthless and ruins the the moment and ruins the punch of the moment, so I hope they don't do that, and it would have made a good ending had it not been from the, for the, oh hey, obviously we're making more because this makes us a lot of money. Um, so that's what I liked, <laughs> believe it or not. Even the stuff I liked, I was uh, going quite negative. Um, so what I didn't like. Um, I said I liked all the character stuff. I didn't like all the character stuff. Because there is far too much relationship stuff. Now, usually this would be fine. But I couldn't give less of a shit about 12 year olds trying to be in relationships. There is some- there is nothing that I'd- there, There's nothing less interesting than that. My god, I do not want to hear about 12 year olds relationship drama for like five episodes. That is, my god, it was annoying. Um, and on top of that, there was also friendship drama as well. I don't, I don't care about the 12 year old friendship drama. It was something, it was stupid, like this is lit, oh. like one of them. Some of them didn't want to play Dungeons and Dragons, and they managed to like drag that out over a whole episode. It's like, oh, just Jesus! Can you maybe get get on with like the monster plot or something? Maybe flesh that out a bit more. I don't care if he wants to play Dungeons and Dragons anymore. My God. Um. So yeah, relationship stuff, friendship stuff, boring, boring, unnecessary. Dumb. I mean, of course it's dumb, because it's about 12-year-old drama. It's all dumb. It's meaningless. 12-year-old relationships. Meaningless. In real in the real world, that they last for like a week. And they're not real. Because it's like, it's basically people learning what relationships are. Like, ooh, I want a girlfriend. I don't know what a girlfriend is, but I want one. Uh, I don't care. Doesn't not interesting unless you are 12 um but i guess yeah, maybe that's like the nostalgia thing like older people looking back at it go like oh, oh oh i remember being like that when i was when i was 12 and uh in the 80s that is what it was like oh 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 i'm sure most a lot of this show's popularity comes from nostalgia 100 percent uh and i think definitely this season relied a bit too much on nostalgia and didn't do the story very well and they definitely weren't as creative um so next thing i didn't like will <clears throat> so the guy who was kidnapped by the monster in the first season and the guy who was possessed by the mind flayer in the second season he is the single most boring character and useless character with absolutely nothing to do, and nothing to say. My god... Why is he in the show? <laughs> so, 
turns out, throughout all of the season, season one and season two, he was either kidnapped or possessed, which gave him something to do. But what I think the creators didn't realize was that if he's not one of those things, he has skipped out on two seasons worth of character development, which means Will is now a nothing character with nothing to say, no meaningful connections with anyone. The only thing he does is complains about not playing Dungeons and Dragons anymore. That is the only thing he does, apart from he can sometimes sense when the monster is nearby, but only if the monster's like 10 feet away, which is useless. If he could sense it coming through the portal or something, that would be useful. But no, he can only like go, Ugh, it's nearby. It's like, yeah, we know, it's, I can fucking see it. <laughs> so, literally, a useless, boring, nothing character. It's, yeah, why? Why is he, why is he in it? Why is he in it? I think I explained that right, but he pissed me off because it was like, you're really wasting my time by showing this nothing character going, oh no, the monster is here. It's like, yeah, we we know the monster's here. And it happened like five times as well. It's like, oh my god. You're lit they're trying so hard to give you something to do, but you're just so unnecessary. Um, next thing I didn't like. Like I said, the story, just the same. It, the story is the same, but with added Russians. So instead of instead of lab lab people, it's Russian lab people. That is the only difference. The upside down is opening, the same monster is coming. Then they close it. Same story, just with added Russians. Um, which means this is why I didn't like that. Like it was good the first time round. Because there, in season one and two, there's a lot of mystery, uh, because the you don't really know where the story is going. So in season one, there's the mystery of what the hell is going on, what's the upside down, what's the monster, where did Will go, who's Eleven, how did she get her powers? There's so much mystery in that one, and then in season two, the mystery is um, who's Eleven's mother, who's the other, who are the other people with powers. How are, like, are the labs still going? How are we going to shut off the Upside Down for good? Uh, what is this massive monster? So in the, in the first two, there's so much mystery and it keeps you interested. It keeps you intrigued, like trying to figure stuff out because it doesn't show you. In the third season, there is zero mystery. Because it's the same and you know everything already. Which kind of makes it lose its point. There's nothing There's nothing new, so there's no mystery. Um, Eleven is the bold girl, yeah, but she's only she's only got short hair in the first season and a, a bit of the second one. And then she's just normal. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I was thinking back um, while I was writing the, the summary and I came to the conclusion that unlike the first two, there weren't any standout moments, really, apart from maybe the deaths. There was no bits where I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, or oh, that's new, because there wasn't any really anything new or very cool. Um, all kind of things we saw before. The monster was just the same, but bigger. It was just a bigger goo monster. So, eh. <laughs> You really couldn't have, you know, done any anything with that. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Billy probably would have been a better villain if he wasn't possessed, um, because as he, when he was possessed, he didn't say anything. There was no dialogue, really. Um, he didn't really do anything. He just wandered about. Um, so yeah, the monster was a cloud thing in the Upside Down in season two, um, and then he sort of. This is sort of very glossed over, but he somehow went through the portal, or some of him did, and he became a goo monster. Yeah, the big thing with this, it's like a big, big old, like, daddy long leg spider, but it, it looks like it's, like, made of smoke, basically, in season two. Um, and then it 
in the real world it takes on the same shape, but a lot smaller and made of goo. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really say... I don't, I don't Maybe the monster's even still alive in the Upside Down? I don't really know. I don't really know. Oh, that's something I didn't... I forgot to say about the ending. Uh, so the, the portal closes. Uh, it also ends uh, with a, another, like, sort of... Uh, not cliffhanger, but sort of a close to it all. Uh, it ends with Eleven not being able to use her powers. Um... Which I thought, I guess, oh, her powers are connected to the Upside Down, I guess, because the portal's finally closed. She's lost her powers, so that's it. That's And that's why I thought, again, yet another reason why I thought it was a good ending. Because, like, it's it's done, it's finished. Like, Eleven's lost her powers because the gate's, like, finally fully shut. And everything's, like, happy ending. But then they had to go and fucking bring in the teaser and it sort of ruined it all. So, yeah. Uh, there's definitely going to be a season four, by the way. I'm pretty sure they've already confirmed it. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, season three, not impressed, really. It was fine. Like I said, uh, it was a fun watch, I guess. But just more of the same, but with no surprises, just a lot worse. Yeah, like I said, I, I said that earlier as well, for it's just like season two also would have been a good end. But they added a little another another teaser, like because it makes some money. So yeah, yeah, exactly. For it, it it does feel season three, and I'm guessing unless they do something different, season four will definitely feel like they're beating their dead horse, because that yeah, poor horse. They please stop beating this dead horse. Um, I just I. <sighs> I don't think it's going to be that great if they continue it. If they end it now, it would be a fine ending. If they didn't have the stupid cliffhanger with the monster still being there and the hopper maybe being alive. Oh, it's just... I don't know. They, they got greedy. I think they got, they're getting greedy with it. They're seeing like how well it's doing and they're like, more, 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 more. And obviously people who haven't... Who, people who just want something to watch and don't really care as much about the story but enjoy the show are like, hey, yeah, more, 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 more. But then if you look into a bit more, it's like, oh, well, that... It's going to get worse. You, you know this. It's a bit like how I... how I gave up with The Walking Dead. Uh, liked it from when I watched it, but then I realised, oh, they're just doing the same things over and over and over... <laughs> And then I eventually just gave up and stopped watching because it was very boring to me. Uh, so I, it seems like it's sort of going that way with Stranger Things, maybe. Uh, so I've, just, I've written here, do I want a season four? Eh. Eh. If they do something different and interesting, yes. Maybe end it after four would be a good point. Um... They could have ended it after season three. They could have even ended it after season two. Both of them were good calves. If they do do a season four, I hope it's a lot better. That's what I'll say. So, uh, judgment, judgment time. As a whole, as a whole, so seasons one, two, three, I'm going to give the whole thing an eight out of ten hams because it's good. The story overall is good. Uh, characters good, mostly. <laughs> Obviously, there are a few which uh, I have uh, strong opinions on. Um, overall, good, good show. Enjoyed watching it. Enjoyed watching all seasons really. Season three, not not bad, but nowhere near as good as it could or should have been. So I'm going to give season three a six out of ten hams. And I think that's pretty fair. Um, some people didn't, well, a lot of people didn't rate it as low as me. I looked at a few reviews online. Um, they didn't rate it as low, um, but it's definitely rated lower than the other two seasons. Uh, so I guess it is the general consensus that it is 
the worst of the seasons uh, so far. You would say all in a whole would be 6 out of 10? I mean, <laughs> Fritz, you literally just said you haven't even watched a full season. And you started with season 2. <laughs> and you haven't even finished season 2, so... Maybe watch it and then, then give a judgement. <laughs> I guess that's why it's not uh, Fritz Hackenstein's judgement uh, on the top there. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be even even worse. Imagine I can I cannot even imagine what your summary would be. Trying to fucking explain everything, having only seen part of season two. Um. But yeah. Uh. But if there's not any. Uh... You know, you know, one day, one day, my parents will realize that I'm, I'm streaming at the same time every day, and, and maybe knock. Maybe knock. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but today is not that day. My god. Anyway, I, I, was, I was saying, I was trying to say, um, if there's not anything else from anyone, uh, no, it was my mother. Um, uh, about uh, anything else about Stranger Things, I should say. Any questions or thoughts or anything, really? I guess I'll uh, uh, wrap it up. So, uh, anything else? Um, anything else from anyone? <clears throat> anything I missed? Or do you strongly disagree with me at all? Or anything, really? Should you watch it? Uh, uh, so, I'm confused. Um, how much of it have you watched, Pete? You said you watched the first episode. Is that the first episode of season three and you've seen the other two? The, yeah, first episode of what season? How many episodes? Have you, how many seasons are you up to date? Are you up to date with everything or what? You've seen the first episode of season one, correct? So you've basically not seen it. Uh, then, yeah, watch it. It's good. Season 1 and 2 especially, good. Okay? Um, obviously, I may, have, I may have... Well, you probably missed a few of the more spoilery things because you missed the summary of 1 and 2. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, I think you'd you'd like it because it's like I said, there's a lot of mystery and a lot of stuff in the first two seasons that I really liked. Um, so yeah, and then if you if you like the first two, I you might as well watch season three because it's like I said, it's not bad. Um, and then by that point, you'll probably like and know all the characters, and you want to see like you, you'll probably want to see season three and like make your own call on it, but. I I think I don't know. People just people just love this show, and I think that's put a sort of uh, you know rose-colored glass on it. Um, and it's like, yeah, I think people maybe like ignoring a few of its flaws just because they they love the idea and stuff. Do I have any merch? What do I have any Stranger Things merch? Uh, yes. Because I think I got a few things in Loot Crate. I've got a Stranger Things t-shirt. And I've got this thing. Uh, I've got I've got this little little model thing of Eleven and the uh, the monster from the first one. Um which is pretty cool. But yeah, I don't think I've got uh oh that is dusty as hell. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've got anything else from it. Uh, but yeah, those those both came in the uh, in loot crate when I still got that. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'd say watch it. It's definitely it's one of the one of the best shows on Netflix at the moment. So 
definitely give it a go. Uh, no, no games today, work tomorrow. Uh, so, I believe that's a good place to wrap up. So, this has been Jam Sam's Judgment uh, on Stranger Things. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, it hasn't. It wasn't the most coherent one at the start. I maybe should have made a few more notes on on the recap because I guess I didn't remember it as well as I thought I did. Uh, but we got by. We got by. Um, but yeah, every week I review a thing. If you have anything at all you would like me to review, uh, contact me on my social medias there. Uh, Discord especially is a good one because I have a suggestion box section in my Discord so just put any suggestions for any reviews I review anything not just TV and movies and stuff um, so put any suggestions there or leave a comment if you're on YouTube or uh, tweet me I guess or anything um, any suggestions um, I will be next on oh here's a big thing is a big thing I will ne next be on on Tuesday so Tuesday the 16th is the day after my birthday unfortunately the, my work were bastards and didn't give me any days off around my birthday even though I requested it a long time ago <laughs> um, I guess they're just heartless um, so I can't do a birthday stream on my birthday but I will be able to do a st birthday stream after the day after my birthday on the 16th so for my birthday stream I'm thinking extra long stream um, probably going like at least I don't know eight, eight hours I guess uh, probably gonna be doing a lot of viewer games maybe some Jackbox some overwatch all that all that jazz uh, yeah lots of lots of viewer games uh, open to suggestions as well that's another thing you can uh, you know suggest and stuff um, so yeah, that is when I'll next be on. I'll be next be on 16th if you want to uh, come and celebrate my birthday on stream with me. Um, but yeah, uh, that will that will do it. So uh, yeah, again, thank you for watching. Bye bye.